look, this was never a fit that made a lot of sense. It was evangelicals liking Donald Trump, very rich, very showy about it, and, you know, talks about communion like it's the little cracker and the little wine. And so I think when they see Ben Carson, they see someone who is a little bit more sincere in his religion. They see him as more sincere and sort of more in line with their values and, you know, more like the kind of guy that you would know next door rather than the billionaire who shows up and draws crowds of thousands. And so I think that we might be entering this period where Iowa voters look at Ben Carson and they just feel a little bit more comfortable with him. Peter, uh, we heard Jeb Bush say that if the w voters want to hear people demonize each other, they should elect Trump. Uh, can he make it, though, through these next couple of months without, in effect, really going after Trump, in effect, demonizing Trump? I don't think demonizing Trump is going to help him at all. I mean, he's been fighting with Trump uh, over the last month or so. It hasn't helped him at all, nor is pouring on all this money into these biographical ads. I, I think that we're, you know, we're entering a potential death spiral for the Jeb Bush candidacy. Um, the, the, he, you know, he is the ultimate insider in an, in an environment where Republicans really, really don't like their own party elite. And he's also just not a very good candidate on the stump. I don't really see how he gets around it. How does he do that? Uh, because, Mark, you've been spending a lot of time looking at his poll numbers. How much time does he have to get those poll numbers up nationally as well as in the key early states? Well, I'm in the category right now is that, that I don't think that it's all over for Jeb Bush. I do think that there's a problem. I do think they're trying to correct it. I do think that he's a terrible candidate right now, and I don't think that you can necessarily put the blame on his campaign. But if you were to look at the polls right now, and if you were to follow the idea that Donald Trump or Ben Carson cannot be the Republican nominee, then you look at the next set of candidates in these polls, and who are they? It's Jeb Bush, it's Marco Rubio, and it's Ted Cruz. And many people think that Ted Cruz, there's no way the establishment could back him. So then what are you down to? You're down to the two uh, gentlemen from Florida. So Jeb Bush really needs to be a better candidate. I don't know if you can put that on but his staff right now. What I wonder is, so they're making these campaign changes, they're cutting salaries, they're slimming down, fine, but that feels like a Band-Aid. It doesn't fix the broader arc of the race. It doesn't make Donald Trump go away. And so far, they're not showing any indication of how they deal with that. They're just kind of buying more time, it seems like. Right. Well, look, we just talked about these polls in Iowa. For the first time, we're actually seeing what the Jeb people have been arguing all along, right? That Trump is a passing phenomenon. You know, they said that after one month on top of the polls two months now it's been more than three months but we are starting to see Carson replace uh, Trump in Iowa and so the the problem with the Jeb case is it really they're not really masters of their own destiny the whole theory of Jeb is he's got to wait for Trump to collapse Carson to collapse right or at the very least getting to a one-on-one -on -one fight Peter go ahead Trump. yeah and the other problem is that the other person in his lane Marco Rubio is a far more talented politician than he is, who has a message which is far simpler to understand, which is that he represents the future uh, and that Hillary represents the past, and, and Marco Rubio has a very powerful biographical story. It may be true that, um, you know, that he's in the same lane with Rubio, but what we've been seeing for a while now is Rubio going north while Jeb going, with Jeb's going south, and I don't think we're very far away from the moment when some of Jeb's donors start to move to Rubio because they think he's the only one who really has a chance of stopping Trump or Carson. All right, uh, let's continue this analysis, uh, but we got to take a quick break. Just ahead, uh, we're also following some dramatic video that we're just getting of a confrontation of a, at a South Carolina high school today. Uh, stand by, we'll tell you what we know.
Cities across the United States are reeling from a dramatic spike in violent crime, and some, including the FBI director, James Kobe, say uh, that's because uh, of what uh, is being called the Ferguson effect. Comey is suggesting that increased scrutiny of police tactics in the wake of the Ferguson unrest and the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement has police holding back. I spoke to officers privately in one big city precinct who described being surrounded by young people with mobile phones held high, taunting them when they get out of their cars. They said to me, we feel under siege and we don't feel much like getting out of our cars. And so the suggestion, the question that's been asked of me is, are these kinds of things changing police behavior all over the country? And is that what explains the map and the calendar? The honest answer is, I don't know. And I don't know that that explains it entirely. But I do have a strong sense that some part of the explanation is a chill wind that has blown through law enforcement over the last year. And that wind is surely changing behavior. Our justice reporter Evan Perez is joining us now with more. Uh, did the FBI director uh, have a chance to clarify, clarify those remarks earlier today? Well, Wolf, you know, he made similar comments today at this convention, the uh, uh, International Association of Chiefs of Police here in Chicago. But he also said that he simply was trying to uh, start a conversation because he is very concerned about the, the spike in murders and other violent crimes in some parts of the, of the country. And he says he doesn't want to wait to see, uh, perhaps to discuss this next year. He wants people to talk about it now. He also spoke of, about the uh, Black Lives Matter uh, issue as well. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. What did he say? Well, one of the things he says he's worried about, Wolf, is that they're simply, people are not talking to each other. People on one side are, 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 are tweeting uh, Black Lives Matter. On the other side, uh, police, police Lives Matter is the hashtag. And he says what, what he's concerned about is that uh, people need to start talking to each other more to be able to solve some of the problems with policing and in, especially in the minority communities. Uh, here's how he described the issues as he sees it. There's a line of law enforcement and there's a line of communities we serve, especially communities of color. And I actually feel those two lines arcing apart right, through the hashtag Black Lives Matter and the hashtag Police Lives Matter. Of course, each of those hashtags and what they represent adds in a voice to an important conversation. But each time somebody interprets hashtag Black Lives Matter as anti-law enforcement, one line moves away. And each time that someone interprets hashtag Police Lives Matter, as anti-black, the other line moves away. And, well, you know, one of the concerns that the FBI director is expressing here is that uh, a lot of this uh, rise in crime is being felt in minority neighborhoods in cities like Chicago, in cities like Washington and Baltimore. And he says that police have to make sure that they're on their job, that they are getting out of their cars, they're initiating these stops that uh, will help bring down those crime rates. And he says uh, that his concern here is simply that people have to talk about these things. He's, he doesn't want people to just sweep it under the rug because it'll be too late by the time we we, we notice what's happening. He makes a fair point. You are watching CBC TV 8 in beautiful Barbados. Hi, I'm Chef Jason Raffitt, and we are here on 5 Minute Meals. We are situated in a nice, cozy little kitchen at Santosha, and what I'm going to do for you today is a veggie burger. Now, have my fan heated already. Add that to the fan. What I'm gonna do now is add some dried rosemary, MIS products. This is very good. Comes in really handy, especially when doing little projects like these. So what I'm gonna do, as my burger is simmering, I'm gonna get some of the rosemary. Give it a rough chop here on my board just so you won't have those big, chunky pieces of rosemary sticking in your teeth. What's not? I already have my bagel toasted. Mind you, these bagels are from Purity. Very nice product. Adding my rosemary to the pan. I'm buttering my purity bread with some nice aloe vera butter. It's a whole wheat bagel. 
put that one aside. I have my burger here, so what I'm gonna do is to fry out some plantain, which is gonna enhance the flavor of this actual burger. And this burger is from Farmer's Choice. It's a quarter pounder veggie burger. They're actually quite nice. What I'm gonna do is to use some of the Swiss barbecue sauce. This is quite tasty sauce. And it will enhance the flavor along with the rosemary, the sweetness of the plantain. You get a little bit of tartness from the actual barbecue sauce. I think these flavors would, would, would pair with each other quite nicely. Add a little bit of salt to this, this dish using Goya products. I'm gonna put some of my barbecue sauce on here. I'm gonna add it a bit liberally. Give it a little spread. So now, Time to plate our actual dish. I'm gonna move over here. Make a burger. Couple pieces of this planting. Cap it off. Give it a quick cut. There we have it. Some heat to the actual dish. So what I'm gonna use is MIS cayenne pepper, ready pots of punch. Drizzle that over the top. And there we have it. I'm Chef Jason Braffitt, and we're here at the beautiful Santosha, and you're watching Five Minute Meals. You're to sign the contract for more. Thank you. Yes. Hey, love. Honey, come, come here, girl. Mm. Mm. Girl, sit down. I got some news to tell you. Honey, you know that I always told you that my dream was to build multi million dollar houses for people. Well, guess what? I just signed a million dollar contract. <laughs> Woo! I could not be where I am today without being productive hard work and I manage my time effectively. I'm just so happy that I can provide for you and my daughter. I am going to teach her when she grows up how to manage her time wisely. Productive inputs result in successful outputs. Brought to you by your friends at the Productivity Council.
Good evening. I'm Kimberly. This is double draw number 18,775 for the 26th of October, 2015, supervised by auditor Nikolai Collimore from Ernst & Young. Let's see this evening's multiplier number. The balls numbers 1 through 5 are released into the staging tube and those lucky numbers are stirred up. Let's see what that multiplier number will be. Your multiplier is 1. Now for your double draw numbers. The first number is 18. The second number, 30. The third number is 3. All by itself, 3. The fourth number, 25. The fifth number, 21. The sixth number, 29. And our seventh and final number is 23. I'll repeat those lucky seven for you. 18, 30, 3, all by itself, 3, 25, 21, 29, and 23. And the multiplier number drawn is 1. And now to this evening's Win It In A Minute show. It's the hottest game show around. Tonight's lucky contestants are Patricia and Marilyn. Now, welcome, ladies. Now, tonight's challenge is the scratch card houses. Are you ready? Get set. Go! Now, each contestant is given 50 scratch cards and is asked to build card houses. The contestant with the highest card house standing wins the game. Every night, we'll invite two lucky players for a chance to win up to $550 in cash and prizes from Massey Stores Supermarket, Berger Paints, and Digicel. To enter, just drop $25 worth of non-winning double draw tickets dated October 1st to November 6, 2015. Now, we've got just about 30 seconds on the buzzer left. And of course, we're watching as Patricia starts to stack. She's trying to get hers together. Oops, okay, we've got a couple builders trying to, to, to see if they can work out a couple kinks in their houses. So Patricia's building, Marilyn is building, and let's see how they do. We've got about 15 seconds on the clock. Let's see how they do. This is a game not for the Swift, but those who have skills at heart. We've only got five seconds to go, guys. Four, three, two, one, down those cards. Let's see who's gonna move in first. Okay, now we've got a winner. Our winner is Patricia, who's won herself $550 in cash and prizes. Compliments Massey Massey Stores, Supermarkets, Berger Paints, and Digicel. And to our consolation winner, Marilyn, she's just won herself a lottery gift pack. Now keep on entering for your chance to win it in a minute. Here's your chance to win it in a minute with Double Draw. Two lucky Double Draw players will be chosen to compete during the 653 Double Draw show. You could win $550 in cash and fantastic prizes. Enter today. Smart Energy Barbados. Smarter. Efficient. Better. This is the SEB Evening News. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Officials are concerned that consumption habits of modern consumer lifestyles could be the cause of increasingly high waste problems. More on this headline after this message. Energy Star is an international labeling program that helps protect our climate and saves individuals and businesses money. Look out for the Energy Star logo on office equipment, home appliances, and electronics, resulting in better performance, lower utility bills, and environmental protection. Energy waste is having a devastating impact on ecosystems and cultures throughout the world, and so too in the Watts family home. Jasmine. Jasmine, what is fridge door open so? Our bill high enough already. We can't be wasting electricity like this. You're right, honey. 
I'll try to do better. What's going on here? Taste this. Mmm, nice. Yes. I've found a way to market seaweed at the hotel. I call it Sargassum Sunrise. How many of these have you had? And mom, with this new Energy Star fridge, we were able to save $500 through a rebate from the Energy Smart Fund and the selected retailers. And the energy guide told me how much energy I would use. And when I compare it to the other fridge, even though this was bigger, it used less energy. Huh? Pardon me, Mom? Oh, because it has the Energy Star label, which shows that it's more energy efficient. Don't worry, Mom. With these savings, I plan to change all the lights to LED and put up the motion detectors soon. Hey, Mom. I'm home. Thanks for lending me your book. And my Energy Star rating inverter washing machine. Mm. My bill will be so much less because this washing machine was designed to lower energy consumption and reduce environmental impact. And with cold water detergents, I can get great results. Without hot water or with the hot water from my solar water heater. Ah! I'll just put it back in your room. Well, you'll have to wait until next week for more on this story. Creating a better, cleaner environment using renewable energy. Saving money and making life easier with energy-efficient products. Make the smart move. Smart energy, Barbados. Live smart. is now 7 p.m. Time for the CBC Evening News. This time check is brought to you by Fruta. Prime Minister Stewart saddened over the recent tragic deaths. Hundreds of teaching appointments announced. And in sports, the Windies batting their downfall as they lose the series in Sri Lanka.
incredible, balanced, committed. This is the CBC Evening News. And a very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Lloyd with the Monday, October 26th edition of the CBC Evening News. We do apologize for the delayed start in our top story. Prime Minister Frondo Stewart has paid condolences to the families who lost lost loved ones over the weekend, describing Sunday especially as a difficult day for Barbados. As Lisa Boom tells us, he made the comments at the South Alive political meeting at the Dighton Griffith School. News broke early yesterday morning of the horrific car accident that claimed the lives of four young women. That accident happened mere meters away from the Prime Minister's official residence, Ilara Court, as the women were returning home after a night of celebrating a member of the group's birthday. We can only guess at the sense of loss and the trauma being felt by their families, and we condole with them, those families, tonight. I'm sure that the MPs for that part of St. Philip will be doing their work to assist and to stabilize those families in these very difficult circumstances. The Prime Minister also extended condolences to the Smith family of Farm Road St. Philip, a body suspected to be that of 75-year-old Marcel Smith, who went missing for close to two weeks, was pulled from a ravine at Halton Plantation in St. Philip late Saturday. But later in his presentation, the Prime Minister gave party faithfuls early warning, saying that the Democratic Labour Party is ready for general elections when the time comes. Flanked by other members of the DLP team, Mr. Stewart declared that the party can defend its record in government when the bell is rung. When the blast of war closed in our ears in 2018, you come and you can you will hear the explanations. We're going to run them. We're going to run them into the sea. You take it easy. If I have any disappointments in politics as the leader of the Democratic Labour Party, it is that sometimes I get the impression that some of the people around me can't wait. 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 It is coming. Wait. Prime Minister Stewart says while the economy remains stable, government still has an uphill battle meeting the expectations of Barbadians. The government of Barbados today has the will. But because of what has gone on in our international business and financial services sector, for example, a hole was dug in our wallet in the area of our corporate tax revenue. So we don't, even though we still want to do some of the things uh, that would meet people's expectations. The will is there, but the wallet is not. When you get back there, but people, we invite people to understand. The theme of Sunday's meeting was staying the course, defining the future. Lisa Broom, CBC News. Well, that meeting also heard at least two major announcements from government ministers, one of them from Education Minister Ronald Jones, who says that over 200 teachers have been appointed to the public service. And within another three weeks, just over 200 more will receive their instruments of appointment. Mr. Jones says once the requisite legislation is laid in Parliament, another 263 teachers will be appointed. It is the first time in the history of Barbados for either education or anywhere in the public service that in one fell swoop 416 persons were appointed in this country. In one fell swoop and then falling up another 263. Meantime, Health Minister John Boyce says November 20th has been earmarked as a date for the long-awaited opening of the St. John Polyclinic. The 20th of November, yes, good people. And I've already sat with Mrs. Mara Thompson, the Right Honourable Prime Minister and the entire Cabinet, and we are going through the detailed plans of that opening. That is a victory for the Democratic Labour Party. 
Well, an appeal is being made for the government to address issues surrounding the dysfunctional South Coast Sewage Treatment Plant. Opposition leader Mia Motley says that plant has been dysfunctional for more than a year and sewage is now contaminating the Graham Hall Swamp. This, she says, can emerge into a possible health crisis for the country. I am asking our Prime Minister, in the interest of all Barbadians, instruct your Minister of Finance next week to find the funds to correct the problems and to fix the equipment at the sewage plant. Because if the Water Authority does not get those funds, the situation will only go from worse to worse. Well, there was consensus among Barbados Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs Chris Sinclair and regional statisticians that national statistical systems have to be better financed. Other areas such as capacity were highlighted at the opening of the 40th meeting of the Standing Committee of Caribbean Statisticians, the 25th meeting of the Regional Census Coordinating Committee and the 8th Regional Statistical Research Seminar at United Nations House. Mr. Sinclair, for his part, called for the formation of a sustainable regional statistical gateway that we take responsibility for, not only in collecting, collating, and piling all the statistics together, but giving the normative methodologies in analyze, analyzing that particular data. Because, surprise, surprise, the world, even though it is interconnected and interdependent, does have some latent differences. And Minister Sinclair says that anecdotal evidence is not enough for policy planning. It therefore behoves us in decision-making uh, roles, those of us who operate within the field itself, but those of us who have the responsibility for ensuring that resources and capacities are provided, that we work together to ensure that our national systems are strengthened that they are sustainable, and most of all, that they are transparent. Meantime, Director of Statistics at the Barbados Statistical Service, Aubrey Brown, says small island developing states are facing a number of challenges in the production of stats. Some of the major challenges faced by our department include, one, a local culture of reluctance in providing information about oneself. This applies to respondents to all various surveys, both households and establishments. Two, inadequate engagements with us by some agencies when they are changing their systems. And this affects our access to administrative records, which are required for the production of official information. Now, support at the highest levels of authority in their country would be beneficial in addressing some of these challenges. Vice President of the Barbados Union of Teachers, Rick Mark Cave, says that the past year has been challenging for its membership. He says that this is due to several ongoing issues in the educational sector. His comments came at the Union's Teachers Week church service held at the St. Lucie Parish Church. Other activities slated for the week include the John Cumberbatch Memorial Lecture and the President's Reception. As you know, we have not had a salary increase for a number of years, but we continue to teach and go to work every day, every day. We have problems with safety and health at school. We are battling those. We have a problem with, we have the problem with cell phones. And I just learned recently, there's a proposal coming on stream, and it is a proposal to have the cell phones and so forth in the school legally with restrictions. Acting Chief Fire Officer Errol Maynard says the Barbados Fire Service has recognized the need to focus more on preventative measures. Mr. Maynard was speaking at the opening ceremony of the Caribbean Association of Firefighters, where he pointed out the need to improve fire services across the region. We need to prevent the next fire. We need to be able to prevent the next building collapse. We need to prevent the need to rescue the next man or the next woman. As we view a new perspective 
it must be focused on professional standards. Standards to be a practitioner in the industry across the region. Standards for promotion and standards for training. Meantime, Attorney General and Minister of Home Affairs Adriel Brathwit says more emphasis must be placed on regional training. But he says that the fire service faces a challenge of not having common equipment throughout the region, which is a severe disadvantage when a natural disaster strikes a neighboring Caribbean country. If our equipment breaks down for some reason, um, warranties, etc., notwithstanding, and that in fact that we know that it is half hour from St. Lucia, half hour from Trinidad, that there's in fact um, resources available within the region um, that, can, that can assist us um, in, in that regard. Because we all know that this equipment is, is expensive, is sophisticated, um, and we, we have to ensure that we are better able um, to take care of, of what we have. Well, coming up after the break, more news. But first, we want to get your take on this question. Do you think the St. John Polyclinic will help to ease some of the burden of the QEH? You can text yes or no to short code 8111. We'll have the results for you at the end of our news. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Your first choice oh, this Christmas. Christmas for a whole lot less. There's 20% off perma, 25% off kitchen and bathroom, and 30% off all Ultima Plus paints. Plus the ever durable Travel Tax Natural for just $98. So dream in color this Christmas with Harris Paints, the Caribbean champions of color. Harris is your first choice. Color your Christmas. Good morning. Coming up tomorrow, Tuesday on Morning Barbados, we will share with you at least five ways to keep your plants happy, you know, when droughty conditions exist. Yeah, when those taps are slow, the plants can still be happy. So Stevenson Skeet will talk with you about that. And Dr. Andrew Ford will be along to share some information on something complex. Too complex for me to say it. So he'll tell you all about it tomorrow on Morning Barbados. Join us. Start your weekend early with Q in the Community Thursday and Saturday. Join us for a special Q in the Community, celebrating Education Month, October 31st at the Asphalt Grounds, the Old Bartel Sports Club, from 11 a.m. Come for dancing, karaoke competition, and lots more. It's a Q weekend, sponsored by Steig, the official bear of Q in the Community, and Jewers Whiskey. Tune into 100.7 FM or join our Facebook page for more details. Students from across the island will soon get a detailed view of Barbados' development over the years. This was revealed as local artist Rashid Boudou, along with the Media Resource Department and Marcos Communications, launched a book entitled Heritage Barbados. As a means of giving back to the community, Mr. Boudou donated a copy of his book to every school on the island. The book captures scenes from past Barbadian life, and in response to changing times, Mr. Boudou is making a special effort to reshape the view of some people that Barbados Barbados has no culture. We need more government leaders to embrace the strength of what this country has and stop destroying to rebel. Stop being historians, because historians speak only of what used to be and what was the past. Be artists who paints the moment. Be photographers who archive 
the history as it is so you can enjoy it as it comes. Also speaking at the book launch was Minister of Education Ronald Jones, who said that there are too many lost moments in Barbadian history. He believes regardless of racial or social backgrounds, if locals are to have a greater appreciation of themselves, the lives of great Barbadians must be properly documented. Bradley Adams, even though Fab Hoyas, F.A. Hoyas has done some work, I do not think in myself that the singular work has emerged and a pioneer of the trade union or industrial relations process in Barbados. I don't think that a single work has emerged on the right excellent Earl Walton Barrow and, and all that he had done between the period of his coming into the House of Assembly, um, elected, then unelected, and then forming a party to which I belong. Um, and, and all that he did in the time of his life. The Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union is continuing to thank its membership in a special way. Over the weekend, the credit union's BlackRock branch hosted an appreciation day featuring mobile health checks and spa services. Branch Operations Officer Harriet Franklin explained that the event is only one of several for its members. She also disclosed that the union is offering loans at special rates for members just in time for the Christmas season. Our Christmas loans have opened, so you can come on down and make the application for your Christmas loans. We have loads of um, saving products available to our members so that you can uh, save more and invest more along with our competitive interest rates. Well, still to come, a look at some of the stories making headlines across our region. But first, we want to hear from you on this question. Do you think the St. John Polyclinic will help to ease some of the burden of the QEH? Text yes or no to short code 8111. We'll have the results for you at the end of our news. And you can also follow us on Twitter at CBC underscore Newsroom and on our Facebook page, CBC News Barbados. In the sky is simply delicious at our mouth-watering brand new Sky Food Court. Our amazing spread includes Little Pleasures ice cream, coffee and desserts, authentic Asian cuisine at Waldi's Walk, delectable Greek dining at Opa Express, a range of sumptuous Caribbean dishes at Tamarind of the Islands, and the very best of Beijing cuisine and pastries. Compliments Master Chef Peter Edie and his delightful pastry house and Peter Patties. Plus, we've got the world-renowned fast food giant. Burger King, you cannot pass Haggard Hall and not join us for a quick delicious meal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner at our brand new food court only at Sky Mall, where when it comes to great fast food, there are no limits. Live up. For more information, contact your local council for the disabled or association. Your week just got better. It's season two of the Tony Thorn Show. With new faces. All the way from Vinci. What's up, it's a girl, Nikita. Yeah, this is Peter Ram. This is Marvin. Uh, Yo, this is King Baba. Like it's the old, you watch it, Tony Thorn Show. New experiences. new topic right here on CBC TV 8. So tune in. Regional news now over in Kingston. The main 
Opposition Jamaica Labour Party will vote against legislation that will allow Jamaica to join the Trinidad-based Caribbean Court of Justice. And that's according to the party spokesman on Justice Delroy Chuck. The Senate is now considering three pieces of legislation which, if approved, will allow Jamaica to join Barbados, Guyana, Belize and Dominica in becoming full members of the CCJ, replacing the London-based Privy Council as the island's final court. But Chuck, speaking at the JLP's Area Council 1 meeting over the weekend, also indicated that the party is prepared to take the issue before the Privy Council if the government is, is successful in the Senate. The Portia Simpson Miller administration used its majority in the House of Assembly to pass the pieces of legislation, but it requires a two-thirds majority in the Senate in order to ensure its passage. While still in Jamaica, the human rights lobby group Jamaicans for Justice wants the country to embrace the prisoner transfer agreement with Britain. Under the deal, Britain has promised to build a new prison in Jamaica and repatriate 300 UK prisoners of Jamaican descent. Chairman Horace Levi says that the country should move with urgency to address the poor conditions under which prisoners are kept. He says that the group is strongly in favour of a new prison. I've seen how prisoners are crowded three and more than three into a single cell that can barely hold one, so that uh, one or two have to be slung in hammocks above the others. Uh, sometimes they fall out in the middle of the night or, of course, they, they, they have diarrhea or vomiting or something, and everybody suffers. So I, I know what the conditions are like. They're atrocious. Uh, and atrocious also is the way that those who are regarded as... Um, Homosexuals are treated in a separate block um, and, and can't even uh, mingle with the others in certain respects. That's slowly breaking down, uh, but it was terrible to the point where they had to sit separately at the back. They couldn't be out at the same time. They couldn't go to the, to the tuck shop at the same time and so on. Well, the world's largest police organization is helping police officers in Guyana to find the origin of more than 10 grenades recently found near a canal. Travis Chase reports. As the Guyana police force continues its investigation following the discovery of 15 grenades and several rounds of ammunition on October 10 near the Lama Canal, Crime Chief Wendell Blanham has confirmed that international police, Interpol, has been asked to assist with the investigation. The, the Interpol request was made by the Ghana Police Force and basically would have provided them with the serial numbers for those grenades. And Interpol, they're going to tell us the origin and, if possible, who was the purchaser and also who was the vendor. But couldn't the Ghana Defense Force do this? The Ghana Defense Force, they're assisting us with our investigation, but we, part of our SOP is to go through Interpol. Great. Whenever there's any firearm seizure, or in this case, these grenades. Interpol is the world's largest police organization with 190 member countries. Its principal role is to assist law enforcement agencies around the world in combating all forms of transitional crimes and terrorism. And sports is just ahead, but first here is a tip from Cooperators General Insurance. This tip of the day is brought to you by Cooperators General Insurance Company Limited. Insurance the way you want it to be. Do not remain at the ATM counting money. Count the money when you are in a safe and secure place. This tip is brought to you in association with the Royal Barbados Police Force. My grandmother always used to say 50 years in 50 days. And a milestone like this door can't run every day. The Barbados 50th Anniversary of Independence Coordinating Committee is inviting you to express your feelings of pride and industry in an original song. It must not have been previously produced, performed, or entered in any other competition and should incorporate the theme, Pride and Industry, Celebrating 50. The song should promote heritage, achievement, and leadership. Any genre of music may be used. Entry should include the lyrics and basic musical accompaniment. 
the winning writer will receive Barbados $5,000. For song competition rules and to download an entry form, visit gisbarbados.gov.bb. Forms are also available at the Government Information Service and all post offices. Submit your entry to the Barbados Government Information Service by 4.30 p.m. on Friday, November 13th. Every Wednesday and every Friday at 10.30 a.m. is the Eddie Street and Half Hour with yours truly. Up on 98.1 The One. I'm going to tell you what we have in store from Eddie's Supermarket, Eddie's Soul Sale, Eddie's Feed Depot, Eddie's Boutique, and LC Variety. The Eddie Street and Half Hour, Wednesdays and Fridays at 10.30 a.m. on 98.1 The, the One. Your mind. The magic of Q. Where the feeling's always good. Fall in love with Q in the community all over again. Good evening, I'm Mark Seal with your CBC Sports World. It's very likely that there will be two K Brathwits at the top of the batting order for the Barbados Pride. So as the local team gets set for their clash against Jamaica starting November 6th, the BDF Sports Program's prolific opener, Kimar Brathwit, is expected to partner skipper Craig Brathwit. The right-hander is the only uncapped player in the 13-man squad for their opening encounter of the 2015 Caribbean Professional Cricket League. CBC's Sean Green reports. Greg Brathwit, captain. Kimar Brathwit. Shamar Brooks. Rustin Chase. Kyle Corbin. Miguel Cummins. Shane Dowrich. Justin Graves, Shea Hope, Ashley Nurse, Kimar Roach, Kevin Stout, and Jamel Warrican. That's the 13-man squad for the home team's first match in this year's PCL tournament. When you look at the lineup, it includes five players currently on West Indies duties, and selectors expect that they will all be back for the first two matches of the tournament. If you realize Omar Phillips is not on that list due to a broken arm, which could rule him out for about three months. But pay close attention to the only uncapped player on the squad. That is the selection of young Kimar Brathwaite. Kimar Brathwaite has been one of the bright sparks uh, that we have identified way back as part of uh, we, our development program. And uh, he has been uh, very consistent in club cricket and in the trials as well. And we felt that it was an opportunity to get him into the setup to experience what it's like at the first class level and uh, maybe looking at maybe down the road that he could probably have a, a long run in Barbados cricket. But at the moment, it's all part of his developmental process. A uh, decision has not been made as yet on the final 11, but certainly to have him in the mix-up at this stage as, the, as one of the alternative opening batsmen, we thought we would seize that opportunity. You may ask, what of the usual suspects like Suleiman Ben, Fidel Edwards or Tino Best? According to the chairman of selectors, they are still in the loop. They are still very much part of the, very much part of the plan. And uh, is this a case of sometimes trying to find a way where you can accommodate everybody? That's not always going to be possible. We try to be as fair as possible across the board. And um, you will see with that combination, it's not always going to be straightforward. There will be some unpopular decisions that would have to be made, and there'll be some disappointment along the way. But there, yes, those individuals that you call yes are certainly still very much in the fray. No vice captain has been named. Sean Green, CBC Sports. Staying with cricket, another batting collapse by the West Indies handed Sri Lanka a 72 run victory in the second test, and with it, a series whitewash of a 2 0 margin. On day five of the rain affected match in Colombo today, with the Windies needing 224 more runs for victory, the regional side were bowled out for 171. Spinner Rangana Harath was the main wicket taker with 4 for 56. He was also the man of the series. 
The Wendy's resumed today on 24-1 and were looking good early on thanks to a solid 60-run second wicket partnership between opener Shea Hope, who made 35, and Darren Bravo with a top score of 61. But once the partnership was broken, it was goodnight nurse, with Jamel Warrican having the next highest score of 20 not out. Here are the highlights. Vidabish, pass Gali. Possibly the ball stopping a little bit. Well played, very well played indeed. That's a lovely on drive. It's a short delivery which he punches through mid wicket for four. He latched onto it. Driven beautifully through extra cover. That's in his zone. Too short and paying the price. Good strike, good straight hit. Repeating the shot, even more powerful. 50 partnership. He's done it. It's happened. Oh, now is that taken? That looked a sharp chance. It's a big appeal and he's given. 49 for Bravo and that will be his half century. He's not really celebrating. He's Edge taken, head out strikes. Got him. Out of the rough, and Sri Lanka have dealt double blows. That must be out, it is. Hit this one for four. And he bowled a full toss. And the catch is taken. So, uh, that game was over pretty fast. But we came back well in the game against Australia. Yeah, they got 325 for something and we ended up with 276 for four. So. That's over the top. We get four here. Cracking drive. What a shot from Kima Roach. Over. We don't have given. He's got a review and he's using it, Kimar Roach. The only question would be if he's, whether he's got an inside edge. Never an issue with that front foot from Herat. Switching sports now, Shuttler's A team proved too good for the Juniors A in both the men's and women's single semifinals of the David King Memorial Interclub Badminton Tournament. Playing at the Wildy Gym, Tamisha Williams got the better of Amanda Harewood of Juniors A in the ladies, while Bradley Pilgrim also had to come from behind to defeat Shea Martin. CBC's Damien Best reports. Semi-finals, inter-club badminton tournament, Shea Martin in black up against Bradley Pilgrim. Pilgrim going for the smash. Martin with the hairpin net shot, good. The subtle touches from Martin helping him to take the first game, 21-19. Second game, Martin has Pilgrim on a shoestring. Left or right, the effort from Pilgrim, but Martin clinical. Pilgrim would hold his nerve though and benefited from some mistakes by Martin to level the match at one game apiece. Pilgrim taking the second, 21-11. The third no change of shirt for Pilgrim. Can he finish the job? Beautiful rally. Martin looking for the opening, but it's Pilgrim with the drop shot. Pilgrim would indeed finish the job, defeating Martin 19-21, 21-11, 21-14. Ladies singles now to Misha Williams of Shuttlers A up against Amanda Haywood of Juniors A in black. Point there to Williams. But it was Haywood who would draw first blood. 21-15 working the angles. Then she drills this overhead smash for the kill. 
Second game, Harewood starting brightly. Williams stretched and does not recover. However, Williams stayed aggressive, passing shot from the forecourt at pace. Williams stopping Harewood at 16 to level the match at one all. Switching ends now, Harewood needing to establish an early lead, but Williams would have none of it. Harewood kept it close throughout, but in the end it was Williams who was just fractions better in the latter stages of the contest, winning 15-21, 21-16, 21-16. Damien Best, CBC Sports. Over the past few weeks, some of Barbados' young basketball players have been part of a clinic put on by Switzerland-based Barbadian Bernard Williams and Serbian FIBA coach Vlado Sojanovic. At the end of it, two players will be selected to go to Europe. After spending a lot of time overseas developing his craft, Williams says he came back to Barbados looking to help develop the young players. I worked at the Swiss All-Star Basketball Camp last year, uh, this last summer, sorry. Um, it's the biggest uh, basketball camp in Europe. And when I went there and I saw the setup with all of these kids, 800 kids from, you know, 115 countries. And, you know, they just go two weeks just to hoop and play. You know, the idea came, why don't we do something here? Now, there are uh, camps here that I saw uh, over the summer on Facebook, social media or whatever. And those were great. Like I think that those were re really good camps. But my focus is more about uh, skill development as opposed to a holistic camp. So Janovic said he was pleased to work with the kids and coaches here in Barbados. However, he added that better facilities would assist in their development. They need uh, better facilities. They need uh, more coaches because these coaches here are great, but they need to have touch with, interna with international basketball. And uh, uh, when, when, when uh, State Barbados do understand that basketball, but the sport, generally sport and basketball sport are very important for youth, that would be a great opportunity to get some more gyms and to do something to develop the basketball here because basketball is a very popular sport between the kids. I'll be back at 8.30 with more sports on TV8, CBC Sports. But up next, Business Report. We've been in the supermarket business for over 34 years. In that time, we have learned that just as important as the experience you have while shopping in our stores is the experience with our goods when you take them home to your family from one generation to the next. That's why we at A1 Supermarkets are fully committed to giving you the highest quality and freshest products at the best possible prices. That's our guarantee. Every day, experience family. Enjoy food. Here's your chance to win it in a minute with Double Draw. Two lucky Double Draw players will be chosen to compete during the 653 Double Draw Show. You could win $550 in cash and fantastic prizes. Enter today. I see I got your stand up and looking real nice, party. Oh, you promise to do it for the longest time. Before I forget, there's another lecture coming up that you can't miss. Uh, what is this one about? Strokes. The Barbados Drug Service and the Heart and Stroke Foundation coming together to put it on. Oh, Stroke! That should be interesting. Oh, yeah. The title of the lecture is Stroke Through the Ages, oh. and it's going to be at the Lloyd Erskine Scientific Center as usual. When it is? Tuesday, October the 27th. Oh. Now, the actual lecture will be from 7 to 8.30 p.m., mm -hmm. but between 6 and 7 p.m., they're providing free blood pressure screening and CPR demonstrations. Yeah, and you'll be able to view displays and discuss therapies used in the treatment of strokes. Now, after the lecture, they're providing bus transportation back to the Fairchild Street bus terminal as usual. Mm, sound good to me, Giggers. Don't forget to tell me, Lee. All right. I go on. Uh-huh. But the house looks real good in truth, though, Cordy. Thank you, Giggers. Thank you.
This is the Business Report, brought to you with the compliments of CIBC First Caribbean. In business tonight, Commerce Minister Donville Innes has been weighing in on the ongoing takeover bids for Banks Holdings Limited. He says while there is often a huge hue and cry when entities from outside try to take over Barbadian companies, there are some other key issues to consider. People get very emotional and start talking about sentimental value of a company. And those things are important. I don't wish to dismiss them. But there's some harsh business realities we have to face. Um, some of our companies, quite frankly, have sat here and, and have allowed themselves to be seen to be undervalued, which is a shareholder matter that shareholders have to get involved in. Um, and I think that on that score, one of the matters that we don't discuss candidly in Barbados is um, shareholders' interests and, sh and shareholders' involvement, active shareholders. Minister Innes says the approach and mindset to shareholding will therefore need to change. So you get a company that has maybe a thousand shareholders on record, but only five of the shareholders are active. And then maybe five for the majority shares, but people just buy shares in a company for tax purposes or whatever, or to say, well, I, I've got some shares in a company, but they don't go to shareholder meetings, they don't even read the share reports. The more some of them do is just wait until the check comes home in terms of dividends at any year. I think Barbados is right for greater um, shareholder involvement in companies and a conversation about how we can get more active shareholders in Barbados. Well, foreign real estate buyers are again showing keen interest in properties in Barbados. And this is according to Managing Director of CIBC First Caribbean, Mark St. Hill. He made the comment during a recent discussion on the current state of the real estate market here on the island. The way the volatility of the market prices and the values were, were quite shocking when, when everything broke. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, but again, we are seeing people coming back into the market. On the domestic side, we are seeing what we call the millennials, the, the individuals now coming out of school and getting their jobs. They're, they're, they're now taking that chance. Um, and yes, we are looking, we are seeing less of buy land and then taking a bridging loan to build. We are seeing people looking in, in the market to pick up a property. Mr. St. Hill also shared his views on the local commercial estate market. He expressed some concern about a move away from Bridgetown by some businesses and noted Warren's recognition as a commercial hub. Well, here now is a look at how stocks traded on selected exchanges across our region. CIBC First Caribbean Visa Classic and Visa Gold credit cards now have rewards. And you choose how you use your reward points. Get merchandise from international stores or receive cash back on your card. And gold card holders can use their points towards flights on any airline. To fly, to buy, to get or to give. Shop, earn, enjoy with CIBC First Caribbean Rewards Visa Classic and Visa Gold cards. CIBC First Caribbean for what matters. And in international business, hackers in Russia, China, and Europe came together to steal an estimated $1 billion from 100 banks in 30 countries. It's been called the Ocean's Eleven of cybercrime. Hackers in Russia, China, all over Europe, coming together to hack 100 banks in 30 countries. How successful? Up to a billion dollars in stolen cash. Going undetected for two years until banks started noticing something suspicious. Just one arm of the attack, but certainly the flashiest. An ATM in Ukraine was randomly pouring out bills onto the ground. The hackers were able to take control of the bank-operated machines remotely and make it rain cash. With and that's business. The weather is next. 
That was the Business Report brought to you with the compliments of CIBC First Caribbean. Well, I heard about it probably around the second week and I had a few photos that I think fit the team well and I decided to give it a shot. First of all, I totally did not expect it and it was a great feeling merely because I had entered that photo um, in NIFCA previously and I got a bronze medal for it and so that, that I really like that photo, it's one of my favorites. So. I, I was glad I won. I believe I have some pieces that I can enter, so yeah, uh, most definitely. Whether you have a DSLR, a point and shoot, or a cell phone, everyone is capable of creativity. So get out, shoot some great photos, enter your shots, and good luck. Hi, I'm Damien. Hi, I'm Tanya. Hi, my name is David Barker, changing the world one drink at a time. Look for me. CBC TV, Channel 8. Shaken, not stirred. Shaken, not stirred. Stay tuned for the CBC Weather News, brought to you with the kind compliments of Massey United Insurance. A very good evening, and uh, over the past 12 to 18 hours, we detected a marginal increase in low-level moisture. Over the weekend, we had a fair amount of middle and high-level moisture, which didn't result in any shower activity, but we actually got 1.2 millimeters of rainfall at the airport, and uh, according to the radar imagery, we had a few scattered showers did occur across Barbados and across the island chain. Well, the maximum temperature still got up to a hot 32.3 degrees Celsius at the airport. This was taken around two. The minimum temperature temperature was 26.4. At 6 o'clock, skies were fair. The temperature was down to 28 degrees Celsius. The humidity stood at 83%, and the winds were coming in from the east-northeast at 28 kilometers per hour. Now, a weak low-level trough moved across Barbados and across the uh, southern portion of the region over the past uh, 18 to 24 hours, and this resulted in heightened instability. Now, the upper level trough, this has been lingering pretty close to the island chain for the past uh, several days. This added to the instability. Now, over the northern portion of the region is where, where the real action was. As a matter of fact, St. Martin had something like 21 millimeters of rainfall uh, during the day. The upper level trough really uh, energized the moisture in that general area, and they had cloudy skies, scattered showers, and some isolated thunderstorms. Our analysis is indicating that this pattern is going to continue over the northern portion of the region. The upper level trough is going to be maintaining its position pretty close to the island chain. It's going to be a little less stable over the southern portion of the region. And we're going to be looking at fair to partly cloudy skies, some scattered shower activity, mostly overnight. Now our analysis is also indicating that there are, um, we're having a series of these low level troughs which are going to be moving into the region. One is going to be passing across Barbados and across the south sometime tomorrow. Again, because of the instability, the added instability being generated by the upper trough, we could very well see a few scattered showers developing here and over the southern portion of the region. I'll be back after the break. You think you're prepared, right? Maybe you even have a first aid kit. And of course, you've done repairs. But can you replace your home and its possessions if they are damaged or destroyed? Is your house insured adequately? 
You can never be too prepared for a natural disaster. Have a preparedness plan in place for you and your family. And be sure to insure your vehicle, your property, and its contents with Massey United Insurance. Give us a call at 430-1900 or visit us online at www.masseyunitedinsurance.com. Welcome back. The model data is not uh, showing up any real deep pools of moisture. We are still uh, we are getting some relatively shallow patches, and they're going to be responsible for some scattered, just some uh, brief scattered shower activity across the island chain. A little more intense over the uh, the Guyanas. They've been having pretty dry weather, and they're going to be uh, welcoming those shower showers as the uh, ITC brings a little bit more moisture to the south of the area. We are going to be looking now at at Tuesday through to Friday and the pattern remains basically the same marginally more stable around Thursday but then around Friday Friday again there's this another low level trough that is going to be bringing a little moisture and some instability and we can look forward to a few scattered showers sunrise is going to be at 551 sunset is going to be at 534 the first high tide is going to be at 25 minutes after 3 in the a.m. the second is going to be at 25 minutes after 3 in the p.m. the first low tide 11 11 minutes after 9 in the a.m. The second is going to be at 9.51 in the evening in the seas. Peaking at 2 meters. The winds across Barbados and across the region easterly to east, northeasterly at 10 to 30 kilometers per hour. Tonight, partly cloudy with some, some scattered showers. And come tomorrow, we're going to be looking at fair to partly cloudy skies, brief scattered shower activity expected. The CBC Weather News is brought to you Monday to Friday with the kind compliments of Massey United Insurance. When a counselor asked how much my husband drinks, I said, not that much. I don't know why I said that. He always drank too much. But I guess I'm so used to keeping it a secret that I didn't tell the truth to myself or anyone else. My husband has drinks with friends after work. He has a couple of drinks at home with dinner and a few more while we watch TV. Pretty soon he's shouting at me and blaming me for all of his problems. I just can't take it anymore. A counselor recommended al family groups. She said al members have had experiences just like mine, and they would explain how al is helping them. I didn't want to go to al but I'm sure glad I did. Is someone's drinking breaking your heart? You might be surprised to what you can learn at an al family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to al Your dogs. See two youth all look like fish there and I'm going to chase them out Yo, here. the man in the virgin, yo, the man in the Yo, the man they don't deserve to live, man. The man abomination. Yo, them things they don't rise. Yo, take it easy. Yo, easy yourself, then. Yo, you know about tolerance. What? Tolerance, gang. You don't have to accept it, but you must respect. See, the same way me don't want somebody to respect me and not judge me because of what me look. That me I talk about. You must respect. Despite people's differences. Show that. Yo, give some respect, get respect. You know you're right, Virgin. You know that makes sense, you know? Respect to you. Respect to them. Everyone has a right to life, liberty, and security of person. Live up, love, protect, respect.
On the international scene, close to 200 people have died, mostly in Pakistan, after a magnitude 7.5 earthquake hit northeastern Afghanistan. Tremors from the quake were also felt in northern India. At least 12 of the victims were Afghan schoolgirls killed in a crush as they tried to get out of their building. At least 180 people uh, have been killed, including 12 Afghan girls who died in a stampede trying to escape their school. It's still not clear how much the death toll could climb since the quake took down communication in so many places. Journalist Catherine uh, James is joining us now live from Kabul with the latest on the damage. Uh, Catherine, what are you seeing there? What are you hearing? Hi, Wolf. Yes, today was a scene of panic even in Kabul where we felt the quake. Uh, for myself, I was in a, a two-story building, three-story building, and uh, initially the jolts here aren't that un uncommon. You feel them from time to time, but this one is definitely probably one of the biggest uh, in recent decades that was felt here. And we'll have a recap of our top stories right after the break. I've been talking about AIDS all my life. I was one of the first females to do something about it. A condom can save your life. That was when I first came out. Well, I live up by protecting myself. Me and my man went to the doctor and we check regularly, so that's what people need to do, you know? If you have a partner, think you're planning to have kids, then you need to check yourself. Both of you be positive and where them say live up, yeah? <laughs> protect, you have to protect yourself. You don't have to use a condom sometimes, yeah? You want to go be about, but you have to protect yourself. If you don't protect yourself, who will protect you? But all the kids, them in Barbados, they don't want to go the wrong way, they want to go the right way. Live up, protect, and respect yourself. Together, we can all make a difference. So take action and turn up the message. Live up, love, protect, respect. Barbados's sweetest radio station has landed. 94.7 FM, the station where the greatest hits from yesteryear come alive. I'm talking to you. The sounds that make you feel good. Only one station delivers the soundtracks of your life. 94.7 FM with the greatest hits of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. A recap of this evening's top stories brought to you in association with Carlton and Emerald City Supermarkets, where Bogoff and Bosch are looking out for you from 6.30 a.m. Prime Minister Frando Stewart has paid condolences to the families who lost loved ones over the weekend, describing Sunday especially as a difficult day for Barbados. He made the comments at the South Alive political meeting at the Dighton Griffith School under the theme, Staying the Course, defining the future. And that meeting also heard at least two major announcements from government ministers, one of them from Education Minister Ronald Jones, who says that over 200 teachers have been appointed to the public service, and within another three weeks, just over 200 more will receive their instruments of appointment. Mr. Jones says once the requisite legislation is laid in Parliament, another 263 teachers will be appointed. Well, there was consensus among Barbados Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs Chris Sinclair and regional statisticians that the national statistical systems have to be better financed. Other areas such as capacity were highlighted at the opening of the 40th meeting of the Standing Committee of Caribbean Statisticians, the 25th meeting of the Regional Consensus Coordinating Committee and the 8th Regional Statistical Research Seminar at United Nations Health. And in a look at the weather forecast for tonight, it will be partly cloudy with some scattered showers. Tomorrow, fair to partly cloudy with brief scattered showers. A recap of this evening's top stories brought to you in association with Carlton and Emerald City Supermarkets, where Bogoff and Bosch are looking out for you from 6.30 a.m. And now to the results of the question we asked. Do you think the St. John Polyclinic will help to ease some of the burden off the QEH? Well, 73% of you said yes, while 27% said no. And that's news for now. On behalf of the entire crew, I'm Lisa Lord. Thank you so much for joining us and have yourself a wonderful night.
watching CBC TV 8 in beautiful Barbados. Take a look. Don't the images remind you of childhood stories, familiar animals, historic landscapes? You're looking at Mongoose Spring Cards, the brainchild of one of Barbados Community College's graphic design students, Sheba Phillips. A GIS team caught up with her at the college's recently held art portfolio under the theme 11 Cents, the culmination of the Bachelor of Fine Arts graphic design program where students are assessed and may also gain opportunities for employment and assistance in brand development. I wanted to reinterpret the old age playing cards. I mean, I was around for, 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 forever and make it ours, Barbadian. Um, so all of these soups are different. So the, the hearts are based on the folklore characters of Barbados. So you will have Malasali and the Heartman, um, Tukban, and then the, the diamonds are based on the flora and fauna. So you will have the black belly sheep, the sugarcane, uh, blackbird, Pride of Barbados, stuff like that. And then the, the spades are based on the British and Alice garrison. Since, you know, we, we were, um, British and Alice garrison was named the heritage, the world heritage site, so they decided to play on that and <laughs> try to build it up. So stuff like the clock tower and apartment buildings, the pendants arch, um, the tunnels and the garrison, and then the clubs were based on anything that was indigenous to Barbados. So you have the windmill, um, snow cone, cheese cutter, um, rum shop, rum, things like that. And then um, all of these illustrations are only cards was placed in a book called. Um, book of Beijing poems, monsters, myths, and meeting places, written, and then poems were added to them as well, written by myself and Isil Phillips. It's the designer's hope that Mongo Spring Cars will be around for a long time. When I came up with the idea, I, didn't, I always wanted it to be outside of portfolio, not a one-off thing, just for portfolio's sake. I wanted it to be um, exportable, something that locals could get, or tourists, or whatever. Um, I want to see it in every store, schools, um, overseas, here. Everybody will be wanting Mongoose playing cards, you know, to get a piece of, of Barbados and culture and celebrate it and enjoy it. Kimberly St. Hill is also missing entrepreneurship with art. So this is Bay, the Barbados Academy of Young Entrepreneurs. We have a program for children ages 8 to 12 that teaches them how to be innovative, creative, and they also get to create their own micro-business, which gives them an idea of what it's all about. Um, one thing that we do push a lot is a think big theme. We always say concentrate on your assets, know your positive self, and then if you think big, you can see how good you really are. So that's Bay. We also have a kit for children ages five to seven, and this kit gives them information and education in a fun way because kids five to seven learn best through play. I think that there are many adults who grow about doing their job and they're not necessarily happy with what they're doing. They're doing it to fit financial needs. But really and truly, I think you should love what you do and fulfill your potential. That way, that's the only way to be happy. So I think they can, they, a lot of Barbadians focus on what they can't do and not what and they can do. And I think it's important to focus on what you can do so then you can you know, expand and make connections with people and show the world what we can do because there's a lot of talent in Barbados. Now, what if you could have a bowl and a napkin while having a snack? Miss St. Hill has managed to get that done for you. Bowkins, the bowl that folds like no other bowl. It is a bowl and it's a napkin, so it has a dual use and everything is eco-friendly. How it works, it comes as a bowl and you unfold it into something like a origami form. And when it's flat, you open it up like a napkin, clean your hands and throw it away. So it's a bowl and a napkin. With the bowlkins, I had a little challenge with finding the brand identity, what I really wanted it to look like, how I wanted people to feel when they saw the product. But in the end, I, I found it and everything worked out. It was good. Another innovative project coming out of the Barbados Community College's graphic design program 
where students are encouraged to create sustainable products. We welcome your feedback on our programs. You may email your comments to bgisfeedback at barbados.gov.bb. You are watching CBC TV 8 in beautiful Barbados. Summertime is a time when teens get to spend more time outdoors, hang out with friends, or learn something new. It's even better when they can do all three. That's what teens get from the Camp Enterprise Experience. We caught up with some campers on a field trip to the Drill Hall Beach where they were enlightened about the sargassum seaweed. Campers got an environmental science lesson from Biogen Biomass Energy Barbados. So living on an island means this, that you are surrounded by the sea and therefore the ocean is your biggest resource. Look at me. The ocean is what? Your biggest resource. Barbados is a two by two. So when it comes to talking about green economy, to be very honest, Energen does not refer, or Biogen does not refer to Barbados as a green economy. We refer to it as a blue economy. Because Barbados is so small, you can't even see it under, everything is blue. Our resources that are available to us are blue resources, not green resources. Everybody understand where we're coming from? Yeah. Right? Now, the other thing is, is that you live on a coral reef. The entire island is a coral reef. From the east coast right over to the west coast, you're living on a coral reef. Therefore, limestone and the dynamics of a coral reef is the reality of your future. We're collecting a bag of wet sargassum seaweed and a bag of dry sargassum seaweed. So when we talk about seaweed and the sea